up, what's up, what's up, my charity boxes? This is my review for The Real Housewife of Atlanta, Season 12, Episode 15, Kenya versus Ken. So it starts off with Eva. As we know, last episode, she was have, going into preterm labor. So we now know that she's on modified bed rest. So she's not able, you know, to do as much as she was doing previously. So she's on the phone, you know, checking in with her family. Um, her husband has the kids. So she's able to, you know, relax and um, rest. So they keep showing how many different cups of ice she always eat. You know, she keep eating ice. But that's common, even with people that's not pregnant. Because I have a couple friends that love to eat ice. I think they say when you when you have people like that, that is some kind of like iron deficiency. But don't quote me on that. Moving on, we have uh, 50 Cent, Cynthia, and her um, fiancé, Mike. So, she was a little alarmed by when she met up with his friends, the female friends, and how they were saying that he never been in love. And I guess by the fact that they all was attractive women, she was feeling a little bit insecure because she, she was saying, like, well, what makes me so different? If he was always a cheater, then what makes him not cheat on me? Nothing. To answer your question, Nothing. Now, it actually has to be that he's ready for um, a committed relationship. If he's not ready for a committed relationship, nothing you do, nothing you say is going to make him be faithful. Now, he's saying that this is what he wants. He's saying that you cover all bases, that he's happy. But I'm not, getting the co I'm not getting convinced from the way he's talking to you that he may not venture out. I'm just not getting that comfortability from him. Anyway, so she was in there reading his book you know his um excerpts from his book and he walks in so they start having a conversation immediately when she just started bringing up the things that was in the book because she was like you know people are going to take away more from the salacious part of the book than you know the uplifting part and he was like well I, I i can't be mad at my past this is my past this is why i wrote it down she was like no so they started like butting heads and it was only because he was not trying to receive what she was trying to say. He looked at he looked at it as she was attacking him and that's not what she was doing. She was just trying to have a uh, adult conversation and he immediately shut down. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't like that kind of energy that he was giving off because how can you guys effectively communicate and get past whatever you guys got going on if you're not willing to hear the other party out? Like, he was trying to deflect, talking about, um, you don't know if you're going to not cheat on me. She was like, oh, I do know. I know. No, you don't. No. Yes, I do know. Because guess what? Some people cheaters and some people aren't. Point blank period. That's how it is. So she knows if she's going to cheat or not. She's 52 years old now, 52, 53. If she ain't cheating all these goddamn years, she know goddamn well. That's not what's, that's not what's in her. Everybody's different. Not saying she better than you, but she knows she ain't no goddamn cheater. So don't put, don't put that tag on her because it's been on you, okay? He was like, you not perfect. No, no one is perfect, but she ain't no cheater, Mike. She ain't no cheater. So Miss Huck Cynthia with the bullshit. Miss her with the bullshit okay mike so anyway she told him she was like listen that's the problem you're a runner and i'm a stayer he was like yeah because i don't want to hear the bullshit no but you better stay and hear the bullshit if you talking about you want to marry somebody because guess what that's what marriage is about y'all talk y'all y'all go through what y'all need to go through y'all talk it out y'all come to some kind of compromise and then y'all did the issue and one person not willing to do that then it's a fucked up situation okay y'all have to communicate y'all have to understand how to do it that's why she said it's best for them to go to train i mean um counseling and i do think that that's a good idea because sometimes you may need a third party not your girlfriends not your mama not your daddy you a, a third party that's not that's unbiased to the situation and come together and help you guys communicate. Whereas though you're hearing what he's saying, he's hearing what you're saying, and y'all can come to some kind of conclusion and then put, put the situation to rest. So that was a good idea. And he agreed to it as well. So moving on, we see candy. Why do they have to be petty? See, you know, it's the running joke on the show that candy love to eat. So, she was eating her little lunch, but they ain't had to keep doing close-ups every time she took a bite. Like, come on, really? So, 
Candy gets on, um, Marlo calls Candy and asks her about the event. Candy was like, well, I don't know how it word got around that it's me and Kenya event. Yeah, but it's an event and I would like for you to come. So Marlo was like, well, as long as it, um, it's you, I'm coming. She was like, <laughs> so she was like, and don't be late. Marlo was like, I'm not going to be late. Um, cause she said, um, Candy said she wanted Marlo on her team. So then you see Kenya with her cousin and they, they, Kenya figuring out what she want to wear to kick, you know, to kick ball. She ended up calling Candy. So they had a conversation. So Candy told her that Nene doesn't want to come because you only came 10 minutes to her event. So Kenya was like, well, I don't want her there anyway. She's mean. She's nasty. Now, Kenya, you in that pot calling the goddamn kettle black. I don't understand how you don't see the mess that you do. Like, you really think that you don't, your shit don't stink? You really think your shit don't stink? And these girls better than me because after that shit you pulled today on this show with your husband, they better not ever allow you to pull no bullshit on them because you have no voice when it comes to him. But we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. So moving on. Now we have Nene and Greg. They're sitting at home talking about, you know, her event her event that she had last episode she said how stressful it was now i don't understand how it was so goddamn stressful because y'all ain't do shit from what the cameras captured and i don't know what went on with that the cameras didn't capture from that it looks like y'all was just all there talking shit and it don't look like no motivational stuff was going on no entrepreneurship stuff was going on i ain't seen none of it okay so she was telling greg how she was happy that portia came and she actually stayed she was like, because Kenya um, came and only stayed 10 minutes. She was like, who only comes to somebody's event to stay 10 minutes? Somebody that's waiting on the host that was three and a half hours late. I ain't waiting on you that long. So I don't understand how you really taking offense to her not waiting for you when you was three and a half hours late. It ain't like you were there and she only stayed 10 minutes. Now, I would have said something about that, about Kenya, but y'all wasn't even there. Like, come on. And y'all not banging like that. I'm not waiting for you. Like, girl, please, get off your, your high horse. So, Greg was telling her how Mark sent out an invitation, an uh, invite that he wanted, you know, all the fellas to um, help out with this charity with, you know, under um, um, with, um, impoverished youth, you know, male youth. So, she was like, well, I don't know about that. She was like, well, maybe we should just stay and, uh, for 10 minutes. So he was saying how she was saying how it was petty that she did the invite and left her out, but she put him in. That was petty because my thing is me and my man coming in as a unit. Don't put him in there if you don't expect me to come. And if you put him in there and don't put me in there, he ain't coming. Okay. So you might as well ask both of us out. And then maybe you didn't really want Greg to come. I don't know. But it was foul how you did that shit. Like, come on, Kenya. If you don't want him to come. Don't invite the husband because they come as a package. Even though you don't realize that because your husband would leave you. Your, your husband would leave you where you at if somebody did that. He would go and say bye-bye to you, okay? So they don't roll like that. See, you don't know that. So moving on, we have the girls. They at the kickball um, competition that they having. You know, we have uh, all the girls there, including Shamia, Kenya's cousin there, and Eva brought her girlfriend, Barbie, to um, sit in for her. So they had, they picking their teams and everything like that. And um, I mean, and guess what? Kenya ended up um, picking Marla. So <laughs> I guess, you know, she was, I don't know, maybe she just was trying to win because maybe Marla was a strong competitor. Who knew? So anyway, we have, I think Candy was the captain of her team and Kenya was the captain of her team. So it was um team hurricane that's candy and team twirl that's um kenya uh so they were picking like the who they wanted on the um teams and everything so portia was like please don't pick me last i have um flashbacks of when you know i guess she was a kid she was always getting picked last so she ain't want to be picked last i'm like oh poor poor portia okay cry me a goddamn river but i get it sometimes you can be traumatized from your childhood you really can so anyway, they all playing, and they was like, is this kickball? So when um, Portia first came in, she was like, is this kickball? Is this dodgeball? She was like, no, it's dodgeball. She was like, no, it's kickball. She was like, oh, she was like, because I don't know about with this group. I know they probably be taking each other heads off if there was dodgeball. 
So they was joking because they was telling Eva, you cannot um play. She was like, I'm not playing. She was like, she stepping in for me because Cynthia was like, because I ain't driving you to the hospital this time. She was like, I was driving like Miss Daisy. She was, <laughs> Eva was like, well, you did a good job. I'm like, listen, we ain't trying to have no babies on the court, okay? Because they say that they far away from the hospital too. So Eva, just keep that baby up in where it need to stay, okay? So they start playing, and oh, my God. Candy looked pitiful with the day on <laughs> She was running. They hit her with the ball. They got washed out. Hurricanes got washed out. I think it was um, 10 to 3. They looked bad out there on the court. Kenya and them team whooped their ass. I ain't going to lie. Okay, so after the girls, you know, get wiped out because, the that, like I said, the Hurricanes got their ass blue. They got blew out the water. So they decided that it it was it it basically was a test because they showed that candy and kenya already like cooked up this plan for if the girls were able to like coexist and um play together um in a cordial manner that they will um, plan a trip so they surprised the girls with a trip to greece they told them that they're going to be you know planning a trip to Greece so Eva was like can I go is it gonna be after the baby they was like no in the um, next couple of weeks she was like darn I can't go no boo boo you can't go you're gonna have to sit this one out honey you're gonna have to sit this one out okay but it'll, it'll be more trips it'll be more trips so the girls were asking like is everyone invited and Nene I mean Candy said yeah I'm gonna extend to the invite to everyone so in Kenya confessional she was like she said that if it was up to her, she wouldn't invite everybody. She was like, uh, "Let me see. Will I? Would I want to invite a treacherous, a treacherous, manipulative, evil person?" First of all, Kenya, you just explain. You that you just ex um describe yourself. So that's like the pot calling the goddamn kettle black. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, come on. Like, you got some shit with you. I know Nene haven't been the nicest person towards you, but you are a mean girl as well. You are a mean girl oh, as now well. Now we have Kenya. Now we have Kenya. She's with her husband. She's with baby Brooklyn. They at some kind of, like, swim class for the little baby. And it was a little cute little family moment. But... I'm sorry. I I just do not see it for the two of them. He does not seem like he's interested in a romantic relationship with her. Like he loves the baby, he adores the baby, but Kenya, I, I ain't really feel. I ain't really seeing it. So he was a little hesitant about um, submerging the baby under the water because that's what the um, the instructor said to do, and he wasn't really feeling it. Um, he did, but baby Brooklyn, she was smiling. She liked it, but he wasn't. He wasn't too um, here for that. You know, King was like, "Well, go here." She was like, "There's nothing wrong with it." He said a little smart comment to her too. I forgot exactly what the hell he said. So they started like they they started talking about like the event because he's wanna he wanna throw a charity event and for um, at risk youth and he wants the fellas to come near and support. So he wants to do a bowling match, like a little, like he want everyone to meet up at the bowling alley so they can get like a feel for one another. Cause he doesn't know all the, you know, the, the fellas. So he doesn't know that she actually didn't invite Nene to the event. She only invited Greg. And I think that's a little weird. Like, why would you invite Greg without his wife? Like, come on, you. You would have a whole fucking hissy fit if somebody invited him without you. That's that's not cool. Just don't invite him, either one of them, if that's the games you want to play. So she was telling him she don't feel comfortable with being in the intimate setting with Nene because she tried to fight, you know, her last time they were, you know, in each other's presence. So he was like, so he he asked her what did she do. So he so she told him she was he was like people, you know, put their finger in people. Um, put their hands in people's face all the time. Where you at, um, my, um, Mark? Because ain't nobody putting their fingers and thing, fists and hands and whatever in my face, and it's not gonna go down. Cause that's rude. You violating somebody's personal space. So where where they do that at? Now you could say y'all could talk it out, whatever, like that. But don't try to dismiss what she's saying. Cause what she's saying is true. You know, you know what I'm saying? 
So I ain't like that about him. You're supposed to ride with your wife. If she's telling you she's uncomfortable, she's uncomfortable. I mean, he don't seem like he get into the, like, the petty shit. So he ain't really trying to hear it. But you should still listen to what your wife has to say. So now we have Cynthia. She's FaceTiming Mark. They're still discussing you know, meeting up with a therapist when he comes to town because, like, they have communication issues. They got to work it on. They got to figure out how to perfect, um, effectively communicate. And I'm all for it because he said on the phone, he was like, nothing's going to tear them apart. He's really committed to the situation. Now, he doesn't give me Mark vibes, but he give me my way or the highway type vibes too. So they definitely going to need this you know, counselor to kind of give him a different way of thinking because that because just because you did that book and you said it was therapy before you, that don't mean you cured or, you know, like battled all your demons. You know, we have demons that we fight every day. You have not four in one. Okay. You still got some shit you got to work through. So I, I'm here for them being able to meet up and you know talk to the therapist and, and, and get on the right track so he said he already found a therapist but they haven't yet set an appointment they're going to wait until he get in town which was a good step because he's showing initiative he took what she said and that little disagreement that they had and he's trying to you know be proactive and I, i'm feeling them for that you know what i'm saying he's like, listen you can't she cannot fault him for what he did in his past he just got to show her now in this present that he's here for her and he's showing her like listen all right i know i got some F messed up stuff going on with me but i'm trying and that's all we can do as people is try so i'm here for it so then we had we see like riley she doing like a little psa for um childhood obesity and that was a cute little moment that you know because she's still fighting that good fight too because you know she lost a lot of pounds so that's good for children to be able to relate to other children so i applaud riley for that then we seen eva she was doing her little photo shoot and she looked pretty good because i seen those photos that went around you know was circulating around and eva looked good like her, her maternity shoot looked good well one thing they can't ever say about her they might say she born she dry but can't nobody say that she's not pretty because eva is she's 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 very very pretty okay to me anyway i mean all right to each his own to each his own so now we have kenya and mark they're at the um bowling out alley they got there before everyone else so eventually everyone else started to pour and we have dennis we have a uh, portia we have um candy we have ty we have eva you know, we have Cynthia and every now let's point out the fact that everyone did not come coupled up. Everyone was not there with their couples. So uh, the issue was Kenya tried to make it seem like the bowling event was for couples and Mark said that it wasn't because when they she got pressed on the situation, she said, Oh, it was you know, the situation was just for couples and because she told Tanya that she Tanya that she couldn't come if her boyfriend was, I mean, if her fiance wasn't coming because it was a couple thing. And Mark said, I did not tell Kenya that every, I told her everyone was welcome. So she kind of tried to backpedal and they was like, no, that's not what you said, Kenya. And then they were going back and forth. Mark shut her down and he kind of wanted to shut the other girls down too because he wasn't really here I don't think he really was here for Portia too, but that's not his woman So he really can't speak You know to someone else woman like how he speak to Kenya because that's where the Ken because that's what the episodes Kenya versus Ken because he calls her Ken and everybody was saying how she doesn't have a voice When her husband is there. He shut her down. She she get she just like shut up like you know she don't say anything i'm like it's okay to be a little submissive if that's what you want to do but not to the point where you're being controlled like come on that's not healthy that's that's not healthy and it wasn't cool so portia kind of um pressed up on that she was like you know, you were rude to Tanya. It's, you and her had a good relationship prior to all that was going on. You had a nerve to call her a cunt. So she got mad at Tan saying to I mean, she got mad at Portia talking about you don't have to be her mouthpiece. Well, she's not here to speak. And you verbatimly said that it was a couple's event, which Mark told and told everyone in your face that it wasn't. So he's he wasn't even privy to like the email that she I mean the 
the um social media post that she put out tagging everyone because he said he doesn't have you know inter um social media so Nene, she already was saying how she didn't. She already was saying how she didn't want to come, but then she said, "Well, maybe we'll come the last ten minutes, you know, of the, of the event, just you know, just to be smart, because that's what she was doing. She was being smart, but I get it, because petty versus petty, you know what I mean? Who's who's the pettiest? <laughs> so anyway, Mark, I mean, um, Greg and Nene come walking up in there. I seen somewhere because you know I'm giving you guys this review late. I seen somewhere where. They did a um a gif on Twitter talk about Nene and Greg was walking in there like Whitney and Bobby was. You remember when she was all cracked out? I think it was in the um jewelry store or something. I died laughing. <laughs> Excuse me. That shit was so funny. So anyway, Nene was being all extra, but I get it. I want I wanna get under your skin. That's what Nene was doing. I wanna get under your skin. So she was like hi you know to everyone you know she tried to even um approach kenya kenya didn't even want to like hug her or you know say anything to her so she would still be actually it was all right so mark and greg was talking and greg was like you know i want to come to the event but i can't come nowhere that my wife isn't invited he was like she's in, um she's invited i would never separate a couple he was like um you both you guys both can come and can he said and ken is agreeance with me, aren't you, Ken? And, and Ken, you was like, yeah, you, yeah. I'm like, so everybody else looking, like, <laughs> everybody else was looking around, cause um, they all was observing it, cause Portia was kind of you spinning, you know, spinning the wheel a little bit. She was like, mm. she was like, cause in her confessional, she was like, he the whole goddamn head, he ain't just the, you know, the head, he the um, whole goddamn body. She was like, she don't say shit when it comes to um him. Everybody noticed it. Nene noticed it because they was over there joking about it. Like, it just didn't look good. Like, Kenya, I don't understand how you think you can come back into the circle with the girls after your husband kind of shut you down. Because even like Portia said, like, we're a unit at the end of the day. If I don't like somebody, you don't like somebody. You don't, you don't got to know why I don't like them. You just going to follow suit. That's the way I ride with my men, too. You going to follow suit, and we can talk about this shit when we get home, but you ain't going about to go against me in front of nobody. And that's exactly what Mark did. He went against her in front of everybody, and he shut her down, and he made her look stupid. And I know she felt, you know, fucked up because she did it in front of everybody that you always coming in and you always talking down to. I wish Tanya was there because the way you did Tanya wasn't cool. I wish she was there to see how he, how you shrunk down to a little goddamn pint sized kid in front of your husband. I wish she was there to see that. Well, anyway, that's all I got for this episode. If you guys like the content, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell and holler at your girl. Bye.